ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! Sheriff Bigger of Pine Grove, Texas, looked questioningly at the young man who stood across the desk from him. So you want me to give you the job of deputy sheriff, eh? Oh, yes, sir. I heard the job was open, sheriff, and I think I could handle it as well as anyone else. Well, what makes you think so, Jimmy? Well, I, I'm quick on the draw. Good shot, and... Yeah, go on, I'm listening. Oh, doggone it, Sheriff. Mom and I need the money the job will pay. We can't make a go of it on that small farm. My dad used to be a sheriff. Mom told me so. I always wanted to follow in his footsteps. All and... right, son, all right. I reckon the job is yours. Oh, you really mean it, Sheriff? Yep, you're young and willing. Hey, wait, I'll give you your badge. Let's see. Yeah. Here it is. I'll pin it on you myself. Oh, gosh. Hold I... still a minute now. There you are. Make you feel any different, Jimmy? Oh, I feel like a million, Sheriff. Believe me, you'll never be sorry you gave me this job. I... I'd sure wish Dad could see me with this badge pinned to my shirt. Yeah. <clears throat> well, son, at least your ma can see it. And I reckon it'll make her mighty proud to know you're a full-fledged lawman like you say your dad was. I'll ride home right now and show it to her. That is, if it's all right with you, Sheriff. Sure, sure, go right ahead. Uh, report to me in the morning for full-time duty. Well, get going, son. You're more be waiting to hear the news. Uh, so long, Sheriff, and thanks a lot. Mary Tilden, known to people in the vicinity of Pine Grove, Texas, as the Widow Tilden, stood smiling in the doorway of her small farmhouse as her 22-year-old son, Jimmy, rode in from the trail. Oh, yeah. ho, ho, ho. Hello, son. I've been waiting for you to come back from town. Hi, Mom. I got the job as deputy sheriff. Oh, that's fine, Jim. We can use the money. Well, I, I'll worry about you. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Pine Grove is a small town. There's not much law breaking around here. It'll just be routine, Mom. Well, in that case, I'm glad you got the job. Your son is now an honest-to-goodness deputy sheriff, badge and all. I'm proud of you, Jim. Very proud. I reckon Dad would be proud of me, too. Seeing as how you told me he used to be a sheriff. Oh, uh, yes, of course he'd be proud. Uh, now you come along, son. I have supper just about ready to put on the table. <laughs> That night at the Alamo Cafe in Pecos, north of Pine Grove, a tough, heavy set man known as Bert Sanger sat talking to an equally tough looking companion. I'm telling you, Dusty, we gotta find some way to get some cash. I'm just about down to my last dollar. Yeah, so am I, Bert. <laughs> Remember Luke Fields, who was in prison when we were there? Yeah, what about him? I had a letter from him the other day. Seems he was married. Went back to his family when he got out. Says he has two grown sons and work and support him. Uh, well, that's the life. Too bad you and me didn't get married and raise a son or two to look after us. Mm. I was married once. You yeah. were? I never knew that. What happened? Left my wife and kid, a two-year-old boy in Kansas City, and came out here to make my fortune. I got in with a gang when things were tough. Never kept in touch with a wife and boy. Yeah. You sure couldn't expect him to work for you. 
He likely grew up hating his old man. Yeah, I reckon he did. Uh, what was your wife like, Bert? Uh, Mary was a mighty nice girl. Pretty, too. But I couldn't stand to see her scrimping and trying to make ends meet. So I joined the wagon train and came out here to make good. Well, I reckon I went haywire. When I decided to be an outlaw, I changed my name to Sanger. Mary Tilden was just too fine a girl for an hombre like me. How long ago did you leave Kansas City? Twenty years ago, Dusty. If I had it to do over again, I'd... Ah, forget it. We got to think of getting some ready cash. Uh, listen, Bert. With that beard and sideburns, nobody recognized you right off. But remember, you're an escaped convict. And if you draw attention to yourself... I know I... what I'm doing. I looked over the Pegasus Bank. And... Holy cow, you mean you're thinking of... Keep your voice down. Yeah, yeah, but... but Bert... We'll hit the bank during the early part of the morning, just before dawn. We'll force a back window, blow open the safe, then head south for the border. Well, all right. Now let's get out of here and stay out of sight till the time comes to pull the job. Yeah, it's good idea. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. An hour before dawn the following morning, Bert stood at the back window of the Pecos Bank with Dusty. Uh, give me the chisel, Dusty. Right, I got it right here. <laughs> this won't take long. Did it? Follow me inside. Come on. I'll be right with you. They always leave that dim light on. That's good enough to see by. Now we'll go to work on that big safe. The two crooks knelt before the safe and worked methodically. A short time later, Bert stood up. Hold on a minute. We'll take cover till it's over. Yeah, all right. Two men crouched expectantly behind the long counter. Then... Yeah, that did it. Come on. Yeah. we got to hurry in case someone heard the explosion. Help me clean out this safe. Sure. Hurriedly, Bert and Dusty emptied the contents of the safe into a carpet bag, then went out through the window. <coughs> hey, somebody's coming here. Let's get going up fast. Hit leather, Dusty. Yeah, easy there. Get up. Come on, get up. A few moments later, the marshal and several men rounded the corner of the building. Hey, look, this window was forced open. That explosion must have come from inside the bank. Why don't you climb in, unlock the back door, and hurry it up? I'll do it, Marshal. Once inside the bank, the marshal and the men immediately realized what had happened. From the looks of it, the experts knew this safe. We'll form a posse, pick up the trail from behind the bank, and... Wait a minute, what's this? Some sort of tag. Let me get closer to the light. It's a prison identification medal. has a number of the prisoner on it. Well, it won't take me long to check it at my office. Come on, and while I check this and find out who robbed the safe, you men go get your horses. All right. When the marshal joined the waiting posse in front of the jail, the first light of dawn was in the sky. He mounted and spoke. A telegraph territorial prison found out that the tag with a number on it was issued to an escaped prisoner named Bert Sang. We'll follow the tracks from behind the bank and try to catch him before he gets too big a start on us. Let's go. All right. Get up. Come on. Marshall and the posse later discovered the crooks had covered their trail by riding in shallow streams and on rocky surfaces. The trail became increasingly more difficult to find. And finally, when darkness fell, they lost it entirely and returned to town. Well, men, too bad we lost the trail. I'll see that news of the robbery is sent to every lawman in this territory and to the border guards. Two days later, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode southward from Pecos. Toto, I learned from the marshal of Pecos 
the robbery was committed by an escaped convict named Bert Sanger. How him know that, Kimasabi? He found an identification tag bearing a prisoner's number. When he checked, he found it was Sanger's tag. It had been dropped in the bank. Oh. We looked for Bert Sanger a long time. The marshal said the track showed Sanger had a companion with him. They headed south. And had good start. Maybe then get cross border. Well, the news of the robbery was sent to all lawmen in this territory, as well as to the border guards. I think Sanger is smart enough to go into hiding for a while before attempting to cross the border. He's bound to have heard that he's been identified as the man who robbed that bank. We'll do our best to locate him and his pal before they do leave Texas. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. That afternoon, Sheriff Bigger of Pine Grove sat in his office with one foot on a chair, a foot which was heavily bandaged. He scowled as he spoke to his deputy, Jimmy Tilden. Uh, doggone the luck I would have to get this attack of gout just when there's something important to do. Uh, what are you thinking about, Sheriff? That escaped prisoner, Bert Sanger, and the sidekick who robbed the Pecos Bank a couple of days ago. They got away with $20,000, and there's a big reward for Sanger's capture. Two thousand in cash. Yeah, I sure could use two thousand. Mom and I could fix up the farm. Uh, but those two are most likely far from here. Now listen, Jimmy. I was talking to the barkeep at the cafe this morning. Seems two strangers stopped in the cafe yesterday. That was before I got the news about the robbery and about Bert Sanger being responsible. Well? The barkeep was on the jury that sent Sanger to prison. He sort of recognized the voice and his general appearance. Oh, don't. It's too bad he didn't recognize him right away. Yeah, but I figure Sanger and the other crooks are hiding out. I found out they bought supplies at the general store. Sheriff, I'm going to search the hills around here for Sanger's hideout. Well, we'll get a posse together. I'd rather go alone, Sheriff. I think I'd have a better chance of locating it without a posse. But you couldn't handle the two of them alone, Jimmy. Well, I wouldn't try. I'd come back and get help to capture him. Well, go ahead if you like, but be careful. That Sanger is quick on the trigger from all reports and a mighty tough hombre. I'll be careful. You're going to try hard to find him. Yep, Mom won't have any more worries if I capture Bert Sanger. Jimmy Tilden didn't know that the escaped convict's real name was not Bert Sanger, but Bert Tilden, Jimmy's own father. Later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped on the edge of town. The masked man waited while Tonto went for a few supplies. As Tonto was being waited on at the general store, Mary Tilden entered. Uh, there you are, Indian. Reckon I have everything. Uh -huh. Oh, howdy, Mr. Tilden. Hello, Jimmy. I ran out of flour, so I came to town to buy some. Jimmy likes hot biscuits for his supper. Oh, fine boy, Jimmy. Plenty of courage, too. One of the sheriff's men was telling me Jimmy went out this afternoon to search for a couple of outlaws by himself. He went alone? Why didn't he take a party? <laughs> he heard there's a big reward for one of them. Reckon Jimmy's plans to get it. Oh. <laughs> The boy has plenty of nerve to go hunting a gun slick like that escaped convict, Bert Sanger. Yes, ma'am. Did you say Bert Sanger? Well, that's right. He's a plenty tough hombre. Jimmy shouldn't have gone alone. Oh, wait. What about the flower? Don't you want to have... Huh. No telling what a woman's going to do. She ought to know her son has to take risks as a deputy sheriff. Oh, um, anything else, Indian? No. no. Me go now. <laughs> When he arrived at the wooded grove on the edge of town, Tonto told the Lone Ranger what he had heard. That means Bert Sanger, another crook, hiding near here, maybe. Yes, and it means more than that, Tonto. I remember a woman named Mary Tilden who came out here a few years ago with her son from Kansas City. Her husband had deserted them some time before that. I uh, tried to find her husband and later learned he had changed his name to Bert Sanger. The man Jimmy Tilden is hunting right now is his own father. Young fellow not know him go to capture own father. No. 
Jimmy thinks his father's dead. If those two meet and there's gunplay... Oh, no, that's not good. No. We ride into the hills and try to find Jimmy before something like that happens. All right, let's go. Easy, steady. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Most of the way. scout. Meanwhile, Jimmy Tilden followed little travel trails. As he carefully searched the hills for a possible hideout. Here, here, come. It was almost sundown when he noticed a thin spiral of smoke rising from a hollow. Jimmy rode in that direction and stopped along the trees on a hillside when he saw a small cabin in the hollow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I never knew that cabin was there. See if I can find out who's living. Hidden from sight by the brush, the young man made his way to a side window and cautiously looked inside. He saw a large man wearing whiskers and sideburns, playing solitaire at a table. That must be Sanger. The other one isn't there. I'll go back to town, get a hey, Mr. Mr. Don't move. Hey, what the Looping around, eh? Turn around. All right. Well, what do you know? A lawman. Yeah, this is mighty interesting. First, I'll take your gun. Now start walking. Bert Sanger will want to meet you, Mr. Deputy Sheriff. Get moving. Bert Sanger looked up as the door to the cabin opened and Dusty entered with Jimmy Tilden. Look who I found snooping at the side window, Bert. Yeah. Deputy Sheriff, huh? I got him covered. And you go out and make sure he came here alone. All right. All right, sit down, you. Yeah, I'm sitting. Now what? Mister, you're kind of young to die. That's the only thing left for us to do. Plug you in. I don't hanker to get back to prison. And I'm not letting you or anybody else send me back. You kill me, Sanger, you'll hang for murder. Maybe. Say, there's something familiar about you. Haven't we met before? I never saw you before. I thought being a lawman, you might have. I've been a deputy sheriff only a few days. My dad used to be a lawman before he died. Well, that's something. You decided to make a name for yourself quick by capturing Bert Sanger, huh? First, it's my duty to try to find crooks like you. Second, I could use the reward that's offered for your capture, Sanger. Say, what's your name? Jim Tilden. Jim Tilden. Say, uh, what's your mother's first name? Mary, why? Mary Tilden. Jim. Where'd you come from? Kansas City. Hey, why all the questions? We're in luck, Bert. Came here alone. Nobody else around. We better get rid of him and head for the border before a posse comes looking for him. Climb to the chair, Dusty, and then gag him. After that, we'll be on our way. Wait a minute. You mean you're going to let him live? Yeah. I'll get busy with the rope. Dusty quickly tied and gagged Jimmy while Bert watched. The big outlaw had suddenly realized Jimmy was his son. He saw now the resemblance to himself when he was a young man. And as he gazed at Jimmy, he was affected by strange emotions. He knew now that his wife, Mary, had told his son he was dead and had died honorably. He wanted Jimmy to keep that memory without ever knowing the truth. Dusty finished tying the young deputy. Uh, that'll hold him. Yeah. It'll soon be dark, Dusty. We'll leave here and keep going. I don't like the idea of leaving him here, Bert. That's the way it's going to be. Listen, if he is found soon, he'll put a posse on our trail right away. I say plug him, then hide his body someplace. No. What's the matter with you? Suddenly going squish. Shut up. Get ready to move on. I'll go get the horses. First time I ever saw Bert Sanger favor a lawman. <laughs> if my gun should go off sort of accidentally and you got plugged, well, there's nothing he could do about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I 
don't aim to have to send a posse after it. Especially now that you've seen Sanger with his whiskers and sideburns. This'll be it, you snooping lawman. Drop that gun, Dusty. Drop it. I'll drop you, you weak kneed long head. <laughs> yeah, now I got your gun, Bert. I'll finish your boat and take all the cash for myself. First, I'll plug that lawman. Hold it, you. Oh, my gun arm. A masked man in the doorway. Watch the boat, Toto. I'll release Jimmy Tilden. Oh. Quickly, the Lone Ranger removed the gag and untied Jimmy. The young deputy spoke with amazement and surprise. Oh, Gona, I don't savvy all this. First, Bert Sanger saved my life, and along comes a masked man and saves me again. We're friends, Jimmy. That's all that matters right I, now. I want to look after Sanger. He's wounded. Uh, he's badly wounded, Jimmy. He, he dusty. Tried to kill the boy. I, I don't know why, but you saved my life. You, you have nerve. I reckon your dad would be proud to know what a good lawman you're going to be. Oh, sure, Sanger. But why Sanger, you... uh, we'll bandage your wound and get you to a doctor. No, no use, mister. I don't know who you are, but I'm, I'm glad you stopped Dusty. I, I had a reason. Yes, but... I, I know the reason. You... You know? Yes. Don't, don't say anything. It's it's best that way. I understand. Mister, if you, if you do know, if you're a friend, let him, Jimmy Tilden, be holding the gun. Posse's coming. He, a reward for him and his mother. Here's your gun, Jimmy. Toto and I'll leave things in your hands. We'll go out the back way. Come on, Toto. Adios. So long, Mr. Lewis. Jimmy! Jimmy, tell him! In here, Sheriff. Great day you shot Bert Sanger. No, Sheriff. His partner shot him. They had an argument. Oh, Sanger's a fool. He got too big for his britches. You, you'll hang for this, Justy. Don't worry. He'll get what's coming to him. Well, Sheriff, your foot, I didn't think In you could ride. In spite of that doggone foot, I had to come after you, Jimmy. I got sort of worried. Sheriff, listen close. Yes, Sanger? Young deputy caught us. No matter what that double-crossing partner of mine says, if, if I die, Justy did it. He wanted the cash... For himself. All right, Sanger. But, Jimmy, this means you'll get the reward. Somehow it doesn't mean as much now. We ought to get Sanger to the doctor. No, no. Too, too late, son. Too late. Be, be a good lawman. Look after you. More. I, I wish I... Sheriff. He's gone. Gosh, I, I wish I could have helped him. He saved my life. Yeah, the masked man did as much for you. Masked man? What are you talking about? He and his Indian friend went out the back as you came in. If it hadn't been for him, I... Well, I should have known he'd show up sooner or later. I've always warned Bird about the Lone Ranger. <laughs> 